In the heart of Willow Creek, a small town nestled among rolling hills and lush forests, the sun rose slowly, casting a golden hue over the quiet streets. The aroma of fresh coffee wafted through the air as the townsfolk began their daily routines. Margaret Hughes, a pillar of the community, had lived here for over thirty years. At seventy, she had become a familiar figure, her warm smile and gentle demeanor a source of comfort to many. Each morning Margaret would rise early to prepare breakfast for herself and her cherished garden of herbs and vegetables. She believed in the power of home-cooked meals and the solace they brought. After a quick breakfast, she donned her favorite lavender cardigan, a gift from her late husband, and stepped out to tend to her garden. As she watered her plants, she greeted neighbors with a wave, stopping occasionally for a chat. Children called her Miss Maggie, and she delighted in sharing stories of her past adventures in law enforcement, stories that had turned into local folklore. Margaret was more than just a retired investigator, she was a living testament to resilience. Before moving to Willow Creek, she had worked for decades as a federal investigator, where she specialized in complex cases involving drug trafficking and organized crime. Her instincts had saved countless lives, and her sharp mind had brought many criminals to justice. However, the burdens of her past weighed heavily on her, memories of unsolved cases still haunting her, even as she tried to carve out a peaceful life in the present. On this particular Wednesday morning, the quiet of the town was shattered by the sound of a loud crash. Intrigued, Margaret set down her watering can and walked toward the commotion. As she approached the nearby alley, she witnessed two young men in a heated argument. It escalated quickly. One man brandished a knife, while the other scrambled to defend himself. Margaret's instincts kicked in. Despite her age, she stepped forward, raising her voice, hoping to defuse the situation. Hey, stop it right now, she shouted, her commanding tone echoing through the alley. But before she could intervene, the man with the knife lunged at his opponent, a flash of metal glinting dangerously in the morning sun. In an instant, the altercation spiraled out of control, and with one swift motion, the other man fell to the ground, clutching his side. Margaret's heart raced as she dialed 911, her hands trembling. She relayed the details, her voice steady despite the chaos around her. When the police arrived, sirens blaring and lights flashing, Margaret was still at the scene, trying to help the injured man. Officers rushed past her, shouting orders, securing the area. But as they assessed the situation, the lead officer, a burly man with a no-nonsense demeanor, turned his attention to her. Step back, ma'am. We need to secure the area, he barked, pointing towards her. Margaret stepped back, bewildered. I was just trying to help. I saw the whole thing, she protested, hoping to convey the urgency of her presence. But her words fell on deaf ears. Ma'am, you need to stay out of this, the officer insisted, not bothering to look at her. You could be a suspect. A suspect? I'm not a suspect. Margaret's voice wavered, frustration and fear rising in her throat. She felt the walls closing in as another officer approached, handcuffs glinting ominously in the light. The lead officer stepped forward, his eyes narrowed. You were here when it happened, weren't you? We'll need to take you in for questioning. Margaret shook her head, her mind racing. I'm a former federal investigator. I'm not a criminal. I was trying to stop them. But her pleas went unheard as they pushed her toward the patrol car. Just follow the rules, ma'am. You can explain everything at the station, the officer said curtly, ignoring her protests. As they placed her in the back seat, Margaret's heart sank. She looked out the window at her beloved Willow Creek, feeling the weight of betrayal and confusion. How had her life taken such a drastic turn? She had spent decades upholding justice, and now she found herself on the other side of the law. With every bump in the road, she replayed the morning's events, searching for a way to make sense of it all. Her mind flickered back to her past, the cases she had solved, the criminals she had brought to justice. Surely this couldn't be happening to her but as the police car turned down familiar streets, she realized she was entering a nightmare she never expected to face. In that moment, a chilling realization washed over her. In a world where good intentions could lead to wrongful arrests, she would have to fight with every ounce of her being to reclaim her freedom and prove her innocence. The police station felt cold and sterile, a stark contrast to the warm, welcoming streets of Willow Creek that Margaret had known all her life. 
The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead as she sat in an interrogation room, her heart pounding in her chest. The walls, painted a dull grey, seemed to close in around her, and the small table felt like a barrier between her and the officers who questioned her. Officer Jenkins, a tall, stocky man with a stern expression, leaned across the table, his voice dripping with scepticism. So you expect us to believe that you were just a bystander in this whole mess? He narrowed his eyes as if daring her to contradict him. Margaret took a deep breath, forcing herself to remain calm. I'm telling you, I witnessed everything. I tried to intervene. That man, she said, pointing towards the door where she had last seen the victim, was in real danger. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Jenkins leaned back, crossing his arms. You expect us to believe that a woman of your age could overpower a man with a knife. You should understand how this looks from our side. Margaret's frustration bubbled to the surface. You're not listening to me. I've spent years solving crimes, not committing them. I was a federal investigator for nearly thirty years. Yeah, well, that was then. You're not on the force anymore, are you? Jenkins shot back, his tone dismissive. Just as Margaret opened her mouth to argue further, a young officer entered the room. Officer Reynolds, with his sandy hair and earnest blue eyes, seemed out of place among the hardened officers in the room. He wore a look of concern, glancing between Jenkins and Margaret. Is everything okay in here? he asked, his voice softer than the others. Just trying to get some straight answers from our suspect, Jenkins replied with a wave of his hand, clearly irritated at being interrupted. Reynolds hesitated, then turned his focus to Margaret. Mum, I'm Officer Reynolds. Can you tell me what you saw? Margaret appreciated his gentle demeanor and began recounting the events of the morning. I was watering my garden when I heard the commotion. I saw two men arguing, and then one pulled a knife. I tried to stop them, but... Her voice faltered as she relived the chaos. Why didn't you call the police sooner? Jenkins interjected, his tone accusatory. I did call. I was on the phone with 911 when the situation escalated. I was trying to help, not complicate things, Margaret replied, feeling exasperated. Reynolds leaned in closer, his eyes searching hers. Margaret, can I ask you something? How long have you lived in Willow Creek? Over thirty years, she replied, puzzled by the question. Why does that matter? Because I know your family, Reynolds said softly. My mother used to tell me stories about you when I was a kid. She said you were one of the best investigators the agency had. She always admired your work. Margaret felt a flicker of hope. Then you know I wouldn't do something like this. I'm not a criminal, I'm just a woman who wanted to help. Reynolds nodded, his expression softening. I believe you, but I need to understand why the other officers see you as a suspect. They're worried about the circumstances surrounding the incident. As the interrogation continued, Margaret's mind wandered back to her days as a federal investigator. She recalled the high-stakes cases she had solved, tracking down a drug ring that had plagued the city, infiltrating organized crime groups, and unmasking corrupt officials. She remembered the satisfaction of bringing justice to victims and the thrill of solving puzzles that others deemed unsolvable. In one memorable case, she had gone undercover to expose a drug trafficking operation. She had gained the trust of criminals, gathering evidence while maintaining her cover. The adrenaline rush had been exhilarating, and in the end, she had dismantled the entire network, resulting in multiple arrests. But that case had also come at a cost and the risks had taken a toll on her health and her personal life. Margaret? Reynolds's voice broke through her memories. Are you with us? Yes, sorry. I was just remembering my past, she admitted, a hint of sadness in her tone. I spent my life trying to help people, and now... Now you're stuck in a nightmare, Reynolds finished for her. But let's figure this out. I'm going to see what I can find out about the witnesses. Margaret felt a spark of hope igniting in her chest. Thank you, Officer Reynolds. I appreciate it. Just then, the door swung open, and another officer rushed in, his face pale and anxious. We've got a problem. The witness who was here earlier has disappeared. Margaret's stomach dropped. What do you mean disappeared? We sent him home after he gave his statement, but he hasn't been seen since. His phone goes straight to voicemail. The officer explained, panic evident in his voice. Reynolds' brow furrowed, and he turned to Margaret, a serious look crossing his face. This isn't good. 
If that witness had information that could help you, we need to find him before something happens. Margaret felt a chill run down her spine. Was this all part of something bigger? Had she stumbled into a conspiracy she couldn't even comprehend? I need to find him, Margaret said urgently, her determination rekindling. I can't let them silence him. If they're willing to do this to a witness, what will they do to me? Reynolds nodded, his expression resolute. We will find him, Margaret, I promise. But I need your help. You know how to think like an investigator. If you have any leads or ideas, now's the time. As the officers hurried out of the room, leaving her with a flicker of hope, Margaret felt a surge of determination. She might be in a precarious situation, but she was no stranger to danger. With her experience and Reynolds's support, she would navigate this tangled web of deceit and fight to reclaim her life. Margaret sat alone in the cold, dimly lit interrogation room, the sounds of the bustling police station muffled by the door that separated her from the world outside. Her heart raced as she processed everything that had happened. The shock of her arrest still felt unreal, but amidst the chaos she began to gather her thoughts. She needed a plan. Margaret had always been resourceful, capable of dissecting complex situations and finding solutions. Now, facing wrongful accusations, her instincts kicked in. She closed her eyes and recalled the many times she had strategized to outsmart criminals. She needed to leverage that same mindset. She shifted in her seat, taking stock of her surroundings. The room was sparse, just a table, two chairs and a camera mounted in the corner. Margaret glanced at the door, wondering how long she would be left alone. A moment later, Officer Reynolds entered the room, his expression more serious than before. He took a seat across from her, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose. I've been looking into your background, Margaret, he said, breaking the tense silence. I wanted to see what kind of person we're dealing with here. Margaret raised an eyebrow, not sure what to expect. And what did you find? You were a well-respected investigator, he replied. You've got an impressive record, solved cases that others couldn't touch. You know the ins and outs of criminal behavior. Which is why this is so absurd, she replied, frustration creeping back into her voice. I'm not some common criminal. I was trying to help. I believe you, Reynolds said earnestly, but the others don't. They see a woman who was at the scene of a violent crime, and they're quick to jump to conclusions. I need to understand more about what happened out there. Margaret nodded, appreciating his willingness to listen. I can help with that. If you give me a chance, I can prove my innocence. We need to find that witness who disappeared. He could corroborate my story. Reynolds looked thoughtful, his brow furrowing. If there's something bigger going on, we need to uncover it fast. I'll talk to the department and see if anyone else can help find him. I suspect there's more at play here. As he stood to leave, Margaret's heart sank with the realization that time was running out. She needed to act, and fast. She leaned forward, her voice low but firm. Reynolds, if they're willing to silence a witness, they won't hesitate to silence me too. I can't just sit here and wait for something to happen. He hesitated, considering her words, then nodded. I understand. I'll do what I can. Just be careful. As he left the room, Margaret felt a surge of determination. She might be behind bars, but her mind was still free. She needed to find a way to escape this situation before it spiraled out of control. She closed her eyes again, trying to visualize a way out. Suddenly, she heard hushed voices outside the door and her ears perked up. She strained to listen, catching snippets of conversation that sent chills down her spine. The drug trade is more extensive than we thought. Powerful figures involved need to keep a lid on this, no loose ends. Margaret's breath quickened. Drug trade, powerful figures. Was this somehow connected to her situation? As a former investigator, she understood the gravity of what she had just overheard. She felt her instincts telling her that she was caught in something much larger than a simple case of mistaken identity. Did you hear about the witness? One voice asked, echoing the earlier conversation she'd had with Reynolds. He was supposed to testify, but now he's vanished. If he talks, it could blow the whole operation wide open. Margaret leaned closer to the door, her heart pounding in her chest. They were talking about a conspiracy, a dangerous one that extended beyond her arrest. But why was she at the center of it? She felt a knot of anxiety tighten in her stomach. Just as the voices began to fade, the door swung open, 
and Officer Reynolds returned, looking pale. What's going on? he asked, his tone urgent. I heard them talking, Margaret said, urgency lacing her voice. They're involved in something much bigger than just my case. The witness who disappeared, he might have known too much about the drug trade. Reynolds's eyes widened. Are you sure? If this is as serious as you say, we need to tread carefully. Before she could respond, a knock on the door interrupted them. Reynolds opened it, revealing a familiar face, an old colleague from her days as an investigator, Charlie Mitchell. His greying hair and deeply lined face spoke of years spent chasing criminals and seeking justice. Charlie, what are you doing here? Margaret exclaimed, relief flooding through her. Margaret, we need to talk, he said, his voice low and urgent as he stepped inside and closed the door behind him. I heard about your arrest. It's worse than I thought. What do you mean? she asked, dread creeping in. Charlie leaned closer, his eyes scanning the room. I'm afraid you're in grave danger. I have contacts who've informed me about the case you got wrapped up in. The drug trade is connected to some very powerful people, and they won't let anyone, especially a witness, get in their way. Margaret's heart sank. But I was just trying to help. I didn't know what I was walking into. I know, but you have to be careful, Charlie urged, his expression serious. They're going to come after you. You've got to get out of here, and you need to find that missing witness before it's too late. What? You can't be serious. I can't just leave. Not now, Margaret exclaimed, panic rising within her. It's your only chance. If they find out you're getting close to the truth, they'll make sure you disappear too. You're in a fight for your life, Margaret, he said, his voice urgent. Officer Reynolds, who had been listening intently, stepped forward. We'll figure something out, but we need to act quickly. The sooner we find that witness, the better. Charlie nodded looking relieved to see Reynolds on their side. Let's put our heads together. There's no time to waste. We need to track down that witness before it's too late. As the gravity of the situation settled in, Margaret felt a mix of fear and resolve. She was determined to uncover the truth, not just for herself, but for all the lives that could be impacted by the drug trade's grip on her town. With newfound purpose, she steeled herself for the challenges ahead. The clock was ticking, and she had to act before the shadows closed in around her. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead as Margaret sat alone in her small cell, her mind racing with thoughts and plans. Each tick of the clock echoed in her ears, reminding her that time was running out. She needed to act fast, but she also needed to be smart about it. With the whispers of a larger conspiracy swirling in her mind, Margaret's instincts kicked in. She had been in tight situations before, but this was different. The stakes were higher, and failure could mean not only her loss of freedom, but also her life. Margaret remembered her training as a federal investigator, how to observe, analyze, and most importantly, adapt. She closed her eyes and visualized her surroundings, the guards, the layout of the station, and the few items within her reach. If she could gather evidence of her innocence while still in custody, she might just have a chance to expose the truth. Margaret's opportunity came when Officer Reynolds approached her cell for the third time that day. He seemed more troubled than ever, and Margaret sensed his internal conflict. She had seen the good in him, the way he listened, the glimmer of doubt in his eyes when others treated her as a criminal. But she also knew he was a young officer bound by loyalty to his superiors. Reynolds, she said, her voice steady despite her racing heart. You need to understand that this is bigger than just me. There's a reason they don't want me talking. He sighed, glancing around to ensure no one was watching. I know, but what can I do? They're not going to listen to me. They will if you give them a reason to, Margaret replied, leaning closer to the bars of her cell. I need you to help me gather evidence. If we can expose this conspiracy, it could save lives, including yours. Evidence? How? He asked, his brows knitted in confusion. Information can be powerful. If I can see some files, hear conversations, anything, I might be able to piece together the bigger picture, she urged, her voice a mix of determination and desperation. Reynolds hesitated, wrestling with his conscience. Finally, he nodded slowly. I'll see what I can do, but it's risky. If they find out... I understand, Margaret interrupted, but we can't let fear stop us. There are people out there who need help. I won't let them suffer because of a mistake. As he turned to leave, Margaret felt a surge of hope. 
This was the first step in her escape plan, and she was determined to make it work. Over the next few days, Margaret meticulously planned her escape. She began observing the routines of the guards, noting when they switched shifts and which officers were more lenient. She recalled the layout of the station, picturing the exits and potential obstacles. Most importantly, she mentally mapped out the nearby alleyways that could lead her to safety. But as the days went by, the tension in the station seemed to escalate. She overheard whispers of a growing urgency among the officers, their conversations punctuated with words like disappeared and search. Margaret knew they were onto something, and it fueled her resolve to act before it was too late. Margaret also took the time to gather subtle hints about the evidence she sought. She listened intently to the officers' conversations, particularly those around the water cooler and during brief moments of downtime. The more she absorbed, the clearer the conspiracy became. There was a drug operation tied to high-ranking officials in town, people who were willing to do anything to protect their interests. Margaret's thoughts were interrupted when she heard the familiar sound of Reynolds's footsteps approaching. Her heart raced. This was it. Margaret, he whispered urgently, glancing around. I managed to get a couple of files. They're in the break room. You'll have to be quick. Thank you, Reynolds, she said, the adrenaline coursing through her veins. You've no idea how much this means. You need to be careful. They're ramping up their surveillance, he warned. I'll keep them distracted, but you only have a small window. With a determined nod, Margaret steeled herself for what was to come. This was her chance. Under the pretense of needing to use the restroom, Margaret waited until the guard had momentarily turned his back. She stood, her heart pounding and casually walked toward the door. With each step, she felt the weight of her past experiences guiding her, reminding her of the calmness she had needed to display in even the most perilous situations. As she reached the hallway, Margaret's pulse quickened. She could see the break room door slightly ajar. She took a deep breath, her mind racing with thoughts of freedom, justice, and the responsibility she had to herself and her community. Inside the break room, the atmosphere was tense, the faint smell of coffee lingering in the air. She quickly scanned the room and spotted the files piled on the table. Just as she moved to grab them, she heard footsteps approaching the door. Margaret? It was Officer Reynolds his voice filled with urgency. You need to get out of sight. In a flash, she ducked behind the table, heart pounding in her chest. The door swung open, and two officers entered, laughing and joking about the latest gossip. Margaret held her breath, praying they wouldn't notice her. The officers poured coffee and continued their banter, oblivious to her presence. Every second felt like an eternity. She silently counted down, waiting for the right moment to make her move. Finally, they left the room, and Margaret exhaled deeply. She quickly grabbed the files, shoving them into her waistband. Just as she was about to head back to her cell, she caught a glimpse of her reflection in the break room window, a frail old woman staring back at her. But Margaret knew better. She was more than that. She was a fighter. As Margaret made her way back to her cell, adrenaline surged through her body. She could feel the weight of the files pressing against her, and with every step she knew she was one step closer to exposing the truth. But just as she turned the corner, she spotted two officers engaged in a heated discussion. Did you hear? They found the witness, one officer said, his voice laced with urgency. He's been talking to the feds. Margaret froze, the missing witness. This was exactly what she had feared. If they found him, they might silence him permanently, and she couldn't let that happen. Yeah, well, we can't let anyone find out what we've been up to, the other officer replied. We have to take care of this now. The words hung in the air like a noose tightening around her neck. This was not just about her anymore. This was about saving a life. She knew she had to warn the witness. As she continued toward her cell, her mind raced. If she could only find a way to escape before they realized she was missing. She had to be quick and strategic. Back in her cell, Margaret paced restlessly. The files in her waistband felt like a heavy burden, but they were also a beacon of hope. Just as she sat down to examine them, the door slammed open. Where is she? An officer shouted, his voice filled with anger. She was supposed to be in her cell. Panic surged within her. They were beginning to realize something was amiss. She could hear the commotion outside as more officers flooded the corridor, their voices sharp with urgency. 
Search the entire station. I want her found now, another voice boomed. Margaret's heart raced as she scrambled to hide the files in a crevice in the wall, hoping against hope that they wouldn't find them. This was it. The chase had begun, and she had to be ready. As footsteps echoed ominously down the hall, Margaret steeled herself for the fight ahead. She would not go down without a struggle. This wasn't just about her freedom anymore. It was about bringing the truth to light, no matter the cost. The real battle was just beginning, and she was ready to face it head on. Margaret lay in her cell, heart pounding, as she mentally sorted through the information she had gleaned from the files. In the stillness of the night, she unfolded the papers she had risked everything to obtain. Each page contained names, dates, and connections that revealed a web of corruption reaching deep into the heart of her small town. A chill ran down her spine as she recognized a name among the local officials, Mayor Thompson. The evidence pointed to his involvement in a drug trafficking ring, leveraging his position to protect criminal activities while simultaneously cracking down on petty offenses. As she pieced together the information, Margaret's mind raced. This wasn't just about her wrongful arrest anymore, it was about justice for the people who had been harmed by the very individuals they trusted to protect them. The implications were staggering. Margaret felt a surge of purpose coursing through her veins, but it was accompanied by a deep-seated fear. The people involved wouldn't hesitate to silence her. She knew that all too well from her years as an investigator. Suddenly, her thoughts were interrupted by the sound of footsteps approaching. It was Officer Reynolds again, his face pale and eyes wide with concern. Margaret, I just heard about the witness, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. They found him dead in an alley. It's all over the station. Her heart sank. What? No, this can't be happening. The weight of despair crashed over her, mixing with the urgency of the evidence in her hands. If they could kill a witness, what would stop them from coming after her? Listen. He continued, his voice urgent. I don't know how much longer I can keep this from my superiors. They're getting suspicious. You need to get out of here. Reynolds, I need your help. I have evidence linking the mayor to the drug trade. If we can get this to the right people, we can expose him, she pleaded, desperation lacing her voice. He shook his head, conflicted. I want to help, but if I get caught, then we make sure you don't get caught, Margaret interjected. We need to act fast. If they're willing to kill to keep this quiet, we can't waste any more time. As the hours passed, the tension within the police station reached a boiling point. Officers were frantically searching for Margaret, and whispers of the missing witness's murder circulated like wildfire. Margaret could sense the paranoia growing among the staff, and it only fueled her determination. Reynolds slipped back into her cell with an anxious expression. I spoke to some officers I trust, but they're scared. They think the department is compromised, that the mayor has eyes everywhere. If we're going to do this, we have to move quickly. Margaret nodded, her mind racing. Let's gather what we can. I'll write down everything I know, and we'll plan our next steps. We need to find a way to get this evidence to someone who can help us, someone who isn't part of this corruption. As she began to jot down her findings, Margaret felt a wave of emotion wash over her. She had spent her career fighting for justice, but now she was vulnerable, trapped in a system that should have protected her. She worried about her friends and family, terrified that the fallout from her actions could put them in danger too. Yet deep down, the fire of her determination burned brighter than her fears. She was ready to risk everything to expose the truth, even if it meant standing alone against the system she had once been a part of. Days blended into nights as Margaret and Reynolds meticulously crafted their plan. They worked under the cover of darkness, their whispers echoing through the empty hallways. Each moment brought them closer to a potential breakthrough, but also heightened the sense of danger lurking around every corner. One evening as they pored over the evidence, Margaret looked at Reynolds, her heart heavy. What if we fail? What if they come after you? I don't want to drag you into this mess. He shook his head firmly. You've already dragged me into it, Margaret. I can't stand by while they hurt people. I see what they're capable of, and I won't let them destroy lives. We're in this together now, and we're going to see it through. His words resonated with her, and in that moment she felt a connection, one that transcended their roles as officer and suspect. They were both fighting for justice, each grappling with the consequences of a flawed system. 
but just as hope surged within her, so did the fears of what might come next. She had seen firsthand how quickly the tides could turn. As the days wore on, the atmosphere in the station became increasingly hostile. Officers began to eye one another warily, suspecting that someone among them might be leaking information. Margaret could sense that the time to act was drawing near, but her heart raced with anxiety over the risks involved. One night, while Reynolds was gathering more intel from the break room, Margaret overheard a conversation that made her blood run cold. Two officers were discussing their next move against her. She's going to be a problem, one of them said. We can't let her get out of here with that evidence. We need to take care of her before she exposes us. Margaret's pulse quickened as she pressed herself against the wall, straining to hear more. Yeah, but what if she's telling the truth? The mayor's been acting strangely, the other officer replied. We should at least investigate before making a move. Investigate? Are you kidding? We need to silence her. She knows too much, the first officer insisted, and Margaret felt a chill run down her spine. She backed away from the door, her heart pounding in her chest. They were planning to eliminate her. This was no longer just a fight for justice, it was a fight for survival. Margaret rushed back to her cell, her mind racing. Reynolds, she hissed when he returned, they're planning to take me out, we need to move now. What? How do you know? he asked, alarmed. I overheard them. They're going to silence me before I can expose the mayor. If we don't act fast, I won't make it out of here alive. Reynolds's expression hardened. Then we have no choice. We go to the media, or I'll leak it myself. They can't kill us all. But Margaret shook her head. No, that could lead them right to us. We need to get this evidence to someone who can help us first. We have to act like nothing is wrong until we can find an opening. The tension in the station reached a critical point as Officer Reynolds wrestled with his decision. The weight of his conscience bore down on him, especially as he watched his colleagues grow increasingly suspicious of one another. The camaraderie that once defined the department was crumbling under the strain of mistrust and fear. One day, during a briefing, Reynolds couldn't hold back any longer. He stood up, his voice steady but filled with urgency. I have something to say. The room fell silent all eyes on him. Margaret Hughes isn't a criminal, she's innocent, and we're making a grave mistake by treating her like this, he continued, his heart pounding. There's more to this situation than we realize. We need to investigate what's really going on in this town before we destroy an innocent life. Gasps erupted among the officers, followed by murmurs of disbelief. The atmosphere crackled with tension as some officers shifted uncomfortably, while others shot Reynolds' glares filled with anger and betrayal. Reynolds, are you seriously siding with her? One of his colleagues spat. She's a suspect in a serious case. We can't just let our guard down because you feel sorry for her. I'm not siding with anyone. I'm standing for what's right, he replied, his voice unwavering. We have to dig deeper. There's corruption at the highest levels, and if we don't act now, we'll all regret it. In that moment, a rift formed within the department. Some officers began to question their own loyalties and the ethical implications of their actions. Others, however, rallied against Reynolds, emboldened by a sense of fear and loyalty to the corrupt system they were part of. Margaret watched from her cell, heart racing. This was the moment she had been waiting for, a crack in the armor of the department. But she also knew that it made Reynolds a target. They would come for him, just as they had for the witness. We need to act fast, she whispered to him when he returned. Before they can silence you, we need to find a way to get this evidence out. If we can reach the media or the FBI, we'll have a fighting chance. Agreed, Reynolds said, determination in his eyes. Let's move quickly. We can't let fear dictate our actions any longer. As they began to formulate their plan, Margaret felt a surge of hope. Together they could expose the truth. Together they could fight against the darkness that threatened to consume them both. But lurking in the shadows, danger awaited, ready to pounce at the first sign of weakness. And as Margaret steeled herself for what was to come, she knew the fight was far from over. Margaret stood in the shadow of City Hall, her heart racing as she clutched the folder containing the evidence against Mayor Thompson. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows that mirrored the weight of her resolve. This was it, the moment she had prepared for, and the stakes had never been higher. Beside her, Officer Reynolds was a pillar of calm in the storm, his face set with determination. 
Are you ready for this? he asked, his voice steady despite the tension hanging in the air. Margaret nodded, steeling herself. We don't have a choice. This is our chance to expose him once and for all. We have to show the community the truth. Reynolds glanced at the entrance to the building. If he sees us coming, he'll know we're on to him. We need to catch him off guard. With a deep breath, Margaret led the way, slipping through the back entrance where the employees often entered. They moved quietly, adrenaline coursing through their veins. The closer they got to the mayor's office, the more Margaret felt a mixture of fear and resolve. She had dealt with criminals before, but this time she was fighting for her life, her reputation, and the safety of her community. As they reached the door, Margaret exchanged a quick glance with Reynolds. They both knew the importance of this moment. She pushed the door open without knocking, stepping into the plush office that was adorned with accolades and photos of Mayor Thompson smiling alongside community leaders. The mayor was on the phone, and as he turned to see them, a look of surprise flickered across his face, quickly replaced by a smirk of arrogance. Officer Reynolds, what's this? I didn't expect to see you here, he said, his voice dripping with condescension. Margaret stepped forward, holding up the folder as if it were a shield. We need to talk, Mayor, about the drug trafficking in this town and your involvement in it. Thompson laughed, a deep mocking sound that echoed through the office. You think you can come in here with accusations and threats? You're nothing but a washed-up investigator. You have no proof. Margaret slammed the folder onto his desk, papers spilling out. You can try to dismiss me, but I have everything you need to cover your tracks. The connections, the transactions, everything. I'm not leaving here until you explain yourself. His demeanor shifted, the playful arrogance evaporating. You really think you can take me down? You're in over your head, old woman. You're going to regret this. Reynolds stood by Margaret's side, his presence a silent reassurance. He felt the weight of his earlier decisions pressing heavily on his conscience. This was the moment where he would either stand for justice or allow the corruption to continue. Mayor, this isn't just about Margaret anymore, Reynolds said, his voice firm. You're endangering lives. You need to face the consequences of your actions. The mayor's expression darkened as he leaned back in his chair, crossing his arms. And what are you going to do about it, Reynolds? You think you can take me down? I have connections. I can ruin your career with a single phone call. Margaret felt the tension crackle in the air. You may have connections, but they're not invincible. The community is starting to wake up to your lies, and if we expose you, it's only a matter of time before the truth comes out. Thompson rose from his seat, his face inches from Margaret's. You don't know who you're dealing with. You think you're strong because you have a badge and a former title. I'll make sure you regret this. Margaret felt fear claw at her gut, but she stood her ground. I'm not afraid of you. I'm fighting for the people you've betrayed. The mayor's laughter echoed in the small room, but there was an edge of panic behind it. You really think you can rally people against me? You're delusional. I have the police force behind me and I can make you disappear. Margaret glanced at Reynolds, who was now tense and poised, ready to act. We're not backing down. We'll expose your corruption and you'll face the consequences. Before Thompson could respond, his phone buzzed on the desk. He picked it up, his brow furrowing. What do you mean she's missing? His voice rose and Margaret's heart raced as she realized they were speaking about the witness, someone who could validate her claims. Margaret, we need to move, Reynolds urged, his voice urgent. No, she replied, panic setting in. We need to finish this. He can't escape justice any longer. Thompson's face was a mask of fury and fear. You think you're smart? You're nothing but a nuisance. I can ruin you both. As Margaret prepared to call his bluff, the door swung open and a group of officers entered the room led by the two men Margaret had overheard discussing her fate. Arrest them, Thompson shouted, his composure cracking. They're trying to undermine our entire operation. The officers hesitated, glancing between Thompson and Reynolds. The atmosphere became electric, a palpable tension that could snap at any moment. We're not arresting anyone, one officer said finally. This is about to get messy, and we need to know where everyone stands. Margaret felt the walls closing in around her. You don't have to follow him blindly. He's corrupt. I have evidence. Shut it, Hughes. Thompson barked, his voice shaking with rage. You're going to regret stepping into my office. Just let us show you the truth. 
Reynolds pleaded. We can't let him continue hurting this community. The officers exchanged worried looks, uncertainty etched on their faces. Just then, there was a commotion outside the building, and voices began to rise. Margaret strained to hear what was happening, and a glimmer of hope ignited in her chest. The door burst open, and a crowd of local citizens flooded into the office, faces set with determination. They were holding signs. Justice for Margaret. Expose the corruption. We stand with Hughes. The officers looked taken aback unsure how to respond as the citizens flooded the office, rallying around Margaret and Reynolds. The tide was shifting. As the crowd surrounded them, Margaret felt a wave of solidarity wash over her. We're not going to let him intimidate us any longer, one of the citizens shouted, raising her voice above the chaos. Reynolds turned to the mayor, his expression resolute. You've lost control, Thompson. The people know what you've done, and they won't stand for it. Thompson's bravado faltered as he faced the angry crowd. Get out of my office. You don't know what you're doing, he yelled, but the determination in the citizen's eyes only intensified. With the weight of the community behind her, Margaret took a step forward. You may have tried to silence me, but you can't silence the truth. You're done here, Mayor. It's time for you to answer for your actions. The crowd erupted in chants, their voices echoing through the halls of City Hall. Margaret felt a surge of strength as she realized that they were fighting for more than just her. They were fighting for justice and the future of their town. The officers, finally understanding the gravity of the situation, began to pull away from Thompson. You can't protect him any longer, Reynolds said firmly. We'll take it from here. As chaos erupted, Thompson made a desperate move, reaching for a drawer in his desk where he kept a concealed weapon. But Margaret was ready. She lunged forward, knocking it out of his hand just as the citizens surged forward, taking control of the situation. In that moment, the balance shifted, and Margaret felt the tide of justice turning in her favor. The citizens had rallied behind her, proving that together they could overcome even the most powerful forces of corruption. As the officers began to place Thompson in handcuffs, Margaret looked at Reynolds, gratitude and determination radiating from her. We did it, she said her voice trembling with emotion. No, he replied, his eyes shining with pride. We did it together. As Thompson was led away, the crowd erupted in cheers, a cacophony of relief and victory. Margaret knew this was only the beginning, but she felt an overwhelming sense of hope. They had confronted the darkness and together they had chosen to fight for what was right. The dust was finally settling in Maplewood, the small town that had recently been rocked by scandal and betrayal. As the sun rose over the horizon, casting a warm glow over the streets, Margaret Hughes sat on her porch, sipping coffee while the sounds of a new day filled the air. The arrest of Mayor Thompson had sent shockwaves through the community, unraveling a web of corruption that had been hidden beneath the surface for far too long. In the days following the confrontation, local and federal investigators sifted through the evidence Margaret had collected, piecing together the intricate details of Thompson's drug trafficking ring. The once respected mayor had connections to powerful figures, both in and out of the police department, but Margaret's tenacity and the support of the community had opened a floodgate of information. Arrests were made, first Thompson's closest associates, followed by several officers who had turned a blind eye to the mayor's illicit activities. With each arrest, Margaret felt a wave of relief wash over her. The shadows that had loomed over Maplewood began to dissipate, replaced by a renewed sense of trust among its residents. Looks like things are changing for the better, Reynolds said, joining Margaret on the porch. His uniform was still crisp, but his expression was softer now, filled with hope. It's a long road ahead, but it's a start, she replied, a smile creeping onto her face. I can't believe we actually did it. Reynolds chuckled. You did it, Margaret. I just stood beside you. Don't sell yourself short. You chose to stand for justice when it mattered most. That took real courage. As they watched the neighbors gather in the park for an impromptu celebration, the air was filled with laughter and joy. Children ran freely, playing games while adults engaged in animated conversations, discussing their hopes for a better future. Margaret's thoughts drifted to her past. Her years as a federal investigator, the cases that had defined her career, and the sacrifices she had made. 
She had fought hard for justice, often feeling like a lone warrior against a tide of corruption. But this time had been different. This time she had a community behind her, rallying for what was right. It's amazing to see everyone coming together like this, she said, her voice tinged with emotion. I thought I'd lost that connection when I retired. You've not lost it. You just needed a reason to bring them together again, Reynolds said thoughtfully. Sometimes it takes a crisis to reveal our strength. Margaret nodded, reflecting on the countless times she had felt isolated in her pursuit of justice. I realized that community is about standing together, not just in times of trouble but in times of triumph too. Speaking of triumph, Reynolds said, shifting in his seat, I think you deserve to be celebrated more than anyone. You put yourself on the line for this town. That evening, the town held a gathering at the community center. It was packed with residents eager to honor Margaret and the other brave souls who had stood up against corruption. As Margaret entered the hall, the crowd erupted into applause. Faces she recognized from the park were now beaming with appreciation. Margaret, 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 they chanted, and she felt her heart swell with gratitude. It was a powerful reminder that, despite the struggles, there was beauty in standing up for what was right. The mayor's former assistant, now acting as the interim leader, stepped forward to address the crowd. Today, we not only celebrate our freedom from corruption, but also the bravery of individuals like Margaret Hughes, who remind us of the strength in our community. Margaret took the stage, her hands trembling slightly as she faced the crowd. Thank you, everyone. This isn't just my victory. It's ours. I've spent my life fighting for justice but I could never have imagined the support I would receive from each of you. Together, we can ensure that our town remains a safe haven for all. Reynolds stood off to the side, a proud smile on his face. He had found his place within the community, no longer just an officer but a part of something greater. As the applause roared through the hall, a sense of peace washed over Margaret. She had confronted her past, faced her fears, and emerged stronger for it. The bonds formed in adversity had forged a new chapter for Maplewood, one where justice would prevail. As the evening progressed, the interim leader stepped back to announce something special. Before we conclude, I have a surprise for someone who has gone above and beyond for our community. It is with great honor that I announce Margaret Hughes has been nominated for the Community Leadership Award. The room erupted in cheers once more, but Margaret stood in stunned silence, her heart racing. Me? I... I don't deserve this. Of course you do, a voice called out from the crowd. It was Mrs. Simmons, a long-time resident. You brought us all together. You gave us hope. Margaret felt a wave of emotion crash over her as the crowd continued to chant her name. She had never sought recognition for her work. Her goal had always been to seek justice and protect the community she loved. Thank you, she managed to say, her voice choked with emotion. I accept this on behalf of all of you, the people who stood by me, who believed in justice even when it seemed impossible. This is our victory, and it's just the beginning. As the crowd celebrated, Officer Reynolds approached her, his expression serious but warm. You know, this nomination might just be the first of many. You're destined for more than just a quiet life, Margaret. She smiled, the weight of her past lifting as she embraced the future. Maybe it is. But for now, I just want to enjoy this moment with all of you. Together we've shown that we are stronger than corruption. Together we can build a better community. The celebration continued, filled with laughter, joy, and a sense of unity that had been missing for far too long. Margaret realized that in the end, it wasn't just about the award or recognition. It was about the friendships forged in adversity, the community's resilience, and the belief that standing up for what is right could create lasting change. As the stars twinkled above Maplewood, Margaret felt a profound sense of peace. She was home, surrounded by those who had fought alongside her, and together they would continue to make their town a place of justice, hope, and love. As the last notes of celebration faded into the warm Maplewood night, Margaret Hughes sat on her porch once again, a sense of fulfillment enveloping her. The town had come alive, not just with laughter and cheers, but with a shared understanding of what it meant to stand together. For the first time in years, she felt a renewed sense of purpose igniting within her. The next morning, the sun poured through the trees, 
casting a golden hue over the town. Margaret gathered her thoughts as she brewed her morning coffee. She had received numerous messages and calls from local schools and community centers, eager to invite her to speak about her experiences and insights. Each invitation filled her with excitement. She realized that her story could inspire young minds to consider careers in law enforcement, careers grounded in integrity, compassion, and a commitment to justice. With this in mind, Margaret began planning a series of mentorship programs aimed at high school students interested in law enforcement and community service. I want to show them that they can make a difference, even in the smallest ways, she mused aloud, the thought sparking joy within her. She envisioned workshops, guest lectures and community engagement projects that would connect students with their local police force, not as adversaries but as partners in maintaining justice. Meanwhile, Officer Reynolds had not been idle. The event had profoundly impacted him, awakening a desire to reflect on his own role within the police department. He had witnessed firsthand the difference one person could make, and he was determined to be that change. After weeks of contemplation, he approached his superiors with a proposal for reform. He wanted to create an initiative within the department focused on community policing, an approach that emphasized building relationships between officers and the community they served. Margaret showed us that we can't turn a blind eye to injustice, he explained during a meeting filled with skeptical faces. We need to be accountable, and we need to foster trust with the residents of Maplewood. Only then can we truly serve and protect. To his surprise, the conversation sparked a lively debate among the officers. Some were resistant to change, clinging to outdated beliefs, but others began to rally around Reynolds's vision. Encouraged by Margaret's bravery and the support of the community, he knew he had a chance to shift the culture of the department for the better. Days turned into weeks, and Margaret's mentorship program took flight. She found herself standing in front of eager students, sharing stories of her investigations, teaching them about ethics, justice, and the importance of standing up against corruption. It's not just about being an officer, she would say, her voice passionate and resolute. It's about being a person who cares for their community and fights for what is right. You have the power to make a difference. Her students were captivated, inspired by her resilience and determination. They asked questions, engaged in discussions, and expressed their own aspirations, eager to learn how they could contribute to positive change. Margaret felt invigorated, the weight of her past lifting as she poured her heart into shaping the next generation of leaders. As for Officer Reynolds, his initiatives began to gain traction. Community workshops were held where residents and officers came together to discuss concerns, share ideas, and build trust. Gradually, the wall that had separated the police from the community began to crumble. People felt heard and respected, creating a newfound sense of unity. Margaret watched this transformation with pride. It was a testament to what could happen when individuals stood up for justice and supported one another. She knew that change would not happen overnight, but every step they took together was a victory in itself. In the months that followed, Margaret's program flourished, and Reynolds' reform efforts gained recognition not just within Maplewood, but also from neighboring towns seeking to replicate their success. Margaret was often invited to speak at events, sharing her story and advocating for justice, resilience, and community solidarity. As the town embraced its new beginning, Margaret looked around and felt a sense of gratitude wash over her. She had found her place, not just as a retired investigator, but as a mentor, a leader, and a beacon of hope. Justice isn't just a concept, she often reminded her students. It's a collective responsibility. Together, we can build a community that stands against corruption and fights for what's right. Together, we are stronger. In Maplewood, the seeds of change had been sown, nurtured by the courage of one woman and the support of many. As Margaret and Reynolds walked through the town, they felt a renewed spirit of hope and determination in the air. The community was no longer just a backdrop. It was a living, breathing entity, thriving on resilience, unity, and the belief that justice would always prevail. With each step forward, they understood that every ending was simply a new beginning, a chance to redefine their paths to stand for justice, and to inspire future generations. And as they looked toward the horizon, they knew their journey was far from over. It was just the start of something extraordinary.